Here we are Dyson V8 or V7. We're going to open it up and explore the insides. You know this is Dyson V8 or V7 because it has the red thing. So first we're going to take out the filter. So the filter comes in two parts. Here there's actually notches or grooves, holes, notches, or grooves, whatever you want to call them. So you need to get a screwdriver. So you need to be careful. This plastic, there's plastic clips uh, actually really weak and can snap really easily. So the idea is just to move the notch enough so that you can uh, disassemble it with your hands. So if you use the prying, a prying tool, you'll actually, um, the plastic is soft and will actually um, snap the plastic. If you have this in front of you, it will be a lot easier to see. So the ID is the filter. You need to press in the filter and it will slide uh, or go in into or inside the filter and you'll be able to take it out. So um, this is actually quite simple if you rush it and damage the filter, but if you take it slow and do it the right way, it does take a bit of time. So here you go. I have able, I'm able to remove it. So it comes in two parts. I'm just going to show you again. So here, there's actually gaps and notches. There's actually three of them. There's three gaps and three notches. So next, we need to take out the bin. So like I said, by pulling this red tab, it opens the bin lid. So this red tab tells you that you have a um, Dyson V8 or V7. There's also this red button you have to press in. So you can take the cyclone or filter part out. So just to demonstrate it again, first you need to align the grooves, the actually grooves, into the slot and you can push it down. Hold the red tab, lift it up. After you hold the red tab, there's these red there's this red button inside. The red button is actually on both sides, it's actually the same button. So next, there's a red button here to remove your bin. Press down on it. So after you press down on it, you push your bin downwards, down, uh, down towards your battery, and it slides off. So here, there's also guide rails as well, like the bin. So you have to align it slightly lower and then you lift it up or push it up and it snaps in. So to remove it, you need to press this red button and you slide it downwards. So here, we can take off this rubber ring. So you just use a screwdriver or your prime tool to lift it out of the circle. Once it's lifted out, you can then start pulling it off and it comes off relatively pretty easy. Please note this only goes in one direction. There's the back side and the front side to this. So ensure that you put it in the right place. So as you can see here, there's the back and the front. The back is flatter or longer, or has a longer flat area than the front. The front has a shorter area. So we're going to put this aside and we're now going to work on the cyclone. So here we have the cyclone. We're going to remove, we need to remove four screws at the back. These are all torque screwdrivers. I believe this is torque T8. 
So to when you remove these four screwdrivers, you remove this guy rail or the slider. So now that we remove the four screws, you just slide it off. Please note the rubber is actually what's um, holding in place. So when you put it back in, remember to lift up the rubber and make sure the rubber goes over the plastic. So the easy way to do it is um, put one side in first, lift up the rubber, and then you can press the whole thing down. Next, you need to remove these two screws. These are also uh, the same screwdriver. Or actually, it's um, a smaller one. This should be the T6 torque screwdriver. Now we need to remove the filter part. This part is extremely difficult and you might not get it the first time. So you need something thin to remove the filter upwards. So I'm going to use a piece of card as it's thin. So the idea is you need to pry the filter open a bit, slightly. This is how you get started. Next, you need to squish the filter slightly and insert the card into the gap. The reason to, for this is um, there's a ledge that stops the filter from sliding out. So we need to um, bridge that gap so the um, filter can slide out easily. So by, by inserting the card, we, uh, we're allowing it to go over those ledge. So there's four ledges or four edges, whatever you wish to call them. So this is why we have to do the whole surround. You'll understand once I remove this and show you the ledge itself. So now that my card is in place, we can now remove the filter. So by going around it slowly and prying it open like this with your hand, it will come off. So here's your filter. That is not supposed to come off. If it comes off, you can just put it back on. It's um, it'll hold in place. So here with the card, I'll demonstrate the um, edges or ledges that does not allow it to slide, as you can see here. See, so what we do is we want to block, um, we want to bridge the gap by placing the cards on the inner circle. We allow the card to slide over the cards. We allow the filter to slide over the cards actually. So here you go, as you can see, it slides freely here, but here there's a ledge stopping the plastic to slide over it. So that's why we're inserting the cards. So it can um, slide over the cards to go over the um, ledges or edges. So next we need to remove four screws. Remember to place your screwdrivers um, neatly and nicely so you remember which screw goes where. So after we remove the screws, you can just lift it up. Actually, it's actually five screws, not four.
So this only goes in one direction. As you see, this flatter part goes towards the back. So this thing here can be removed. It's just a rubber head. So you just pull it off and it comes off. So next, this part here, you can just lift it up. So by wiggling it left and right, it will come off. So this black part here, just hold on to it. Wiggle it left and right, up, down a bit, and it'll slowly move out. This too only goes in one direction. As you see, the longer part goes towards the back. And you insert this in by um, force and wiggling it in. Next, you're going to need a longer reaching torque screwdriver. Your screws might be covered in dust, so you can't see. So I'm just going to point out the screws to you. It's actually hard for me to see as well because it's covered in dust. So um, a good if you don't have a longer reaching torque screwdriver, there's um, a method you can do is to increase the <coughs> height of your tip by um, putting a screw into your or putting a rock or paper into your hole first so that makes your um, uh, screw bit doesn't go in so deep and that should be enough for you to reach so here as you can see my screwdriver I wasn't able to reach it so what I got was I got a screw be careful, a screw is uh, magnetic, so when to remove the screw that you left inside there, it might be difficult. So I got a screw to increase my reach. So now that I have removed all the screws, you can just lift it up and it comes apart. So this comes, so I'm just pointing out the screws. Since um, I inserted something into my screwdriver, my magnetic force on my screwdriver is a lot weaker, so I can't pull out the screws. So after you remove this, you can just lift them all up and they come apart. Remember when you reinsert these to line it up correctly. So it's recommended that you line up using the screw holes as it's a good guide to how it should go in. So I'm just pointing out you there's actually rails here. So we can actually remove this piece. Just before I do that, I'm just going to remove my poke my screwdrivers out, or my screws out. So as you can see, they're falling out. So by wiggling it a bit, it will come out. And here there's rails. 
So these needs to be good. Uh, the, these you need to align these so you can put it back in place properly. So once you put it in place properly, you can just press it down and it should go in. Remember to put it in the right direction. I'm also just pointing out the rails. If you have this in front of you, it makes it a lot easier. So room to align the rails. And once they are aligned and straight, you can just push them down. Next, we're gonna remove this red foam part. This is actually a gasket or a seal. The idea of this is to make sure there's no gaps between the two parts. So you can just lift this up slowly. So be careful, try not to rip this. It's actually quite um, fragile. So once you have lifted up, it's like this. Remember, it only goes in one direction, as in there's only one side that it should go in. The center part, you can also remove this as well. It's recommended you remove this afterwards as it has spikes on the side and also this also goes in one direction as well for room to align it correctly so the spikes on the side will actually um can rip your um, red gasket so it's better to remove the red gasket first before you remove the inner piece So after this, we need to combine these two pieces together. Remember to align your screw hole and remember to put the back at the back. So after you do that, you can put the head back on. Also remember to align the back with the back. So squish it in together with your hand and if it feels like it's squished, then it's most likely correct. Put your four screws back in the center Remember, this part you need a longer reach torque screwdriver. So as I told you previously, I actually inserted a screw into my uh, magnetic tip to make it stick, uh, so my tip can stick out longer, and that seems to be enough. But remember, if you insert a screw in there because it's magnetic, it's um, difficult to remove. So um, think about it before you do it. You might want to insert paper or a rock or a, rain of, a grain of rice, which is um, not magnetic. So next, we're gonna put this together. Also remember to align the back with the back. And after you do that, you just wiggle it in and it should go in. So how you know it's in? Because um, you, you can't wiggle it anymore. So next, we got this covering. So how do you remember to align the back with the back? And also, um, it has screw holes, so remember to align the screw holes in the correct place. If the screw holes are correct, then it's most likely in the correct position. So next, we're gonna insert this. You can just place this over the top and it'll work. You don't need any cards. To remove it, you need the cards. And also remember to align the back with the back, which I didn't do before. That's why it didn't go in. And once it's aligned, just a bit of force downwards and it will snap. It actually makes a snapping sound. Remember to put your rubber head back on or else your vacuum cleaner will seal correctly.
so I actually dropped the screwdriver inside. I should drop my um, um, tip inside actually. Just need to find another tip since I lost my tip. So we need to put these two screws on the side back next to the guide rail. After this, you need to change tip. You need to go to a big one. I think it's a T8. So for the whole thing you just saw now, we used the T6 and it was good enough. Now we need to put this back in. Remember to put one side in first and make sure the rubber goes over it. And then you can press the rest in. So I just changed tips. There's four screws you need to put in. You can put it in any order and they are the same screw. So um, the rubber hole, um, the flap does block your way a bit, so you might need to move it out slightly to put the screw in. Now that's done, we need to take the bin and the vacuum cleaner to put it back together. So just align, remember when you're doing this, you need to align your latch to the open. If your latch is on closed, you can't slide it down. Also remember to put the guide rails in the guide So as you see, my um, my latch was in the closed position, so I couldn't bring it down. So how do you know which is open or closed? Just try it out and don't put too much force in it. If it gets stuck, it's most likely in the wrong position and try again. You're not going to break it. Remember to put your filter back in. You're supposed to actually put your bin back in first, as it's slightly difficult to do it this way. You don't have to take your bin out, you just can lift up your bin halfway, and you can insert your bin. Remember to insert your bin correctly into the guide rails. Close the head. I forgot to put the rubber ring back on the bottom. The rubber ring is actually really important. The rubber ring um, seals your vacuum cleaner. If you don't have the rubber ring, you'll lose a lot of power. So just putting back on my rubber ring. Remember the back side and front side, there's long and short. We're going to put it in correctly.
So I'm just using a screwdriver to assist me to push it down as this area is slightly tight. So you also can test it once you're done to show see if it seals correctly. Now that we're done, we're going to put our bin in first. Slightly lower, then lift it up. We're going to put our bin in, uh, our cyclone in, and just push it down. Now you can press it to see if it runs. And that's basically it. Thanks for watching.